Thank you for being here to talk about this deliciousness. Well, people actually did come to talk to us, huh? <laughs> nice, nice. I mean, look at this spread, honestly. Which one should I try, Camilla? You should try one of my favorites, which is the apple banana blueberry. I have it right here, actually. Here, I have it in the bowl. Do you want to start by trying? Sure. That one is frozen, so you don't want to, you got to defrost it before sure. you squeeze it out. And while I, try, while I try this, talk to me about how you got started. Yes, so I would, you know, I would start with my journey, and then... Uh, oh my God, this is really good. It's really this good, is like right? It's really, really, really good. I know. It's like applesauce with a kick. 100%, like 10 times better. Oh my God, sorry. <laughs> Good. I know well, it's like really unattractive to eat on camera, so I'm gonna pace myself. <laughs> well, I'll tell you how the journey starts. So, Yummy Spoonful is actually a company that my partner, Agata Achindu, she's mm -hmm. from Africa, she found the company about nine years ago. And she was doing, you know, in the Atlanta, South region area. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she has a whole journey of how she started and, again, trying to feed kids the right thing. For me, the journey started with you know, every child I had, I have three kids. I have a three, a six, and a seven. <laughs> so I know it's crazy over there. But um, it started to, you know, every time I had a baby, I was like, I gotta do this as a business. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get pregnant again, and you know, that idea will mm -hmm. go down the drain, right? And then with my third, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna get pregnant again. I'm good with the three. <laughs> and I remember we were actually on location, living in Calgary in the middle of nowhere, living in a trailer, the whole family. And it's 3 a.m. and I got bowls of parades everywhere. The kitchen is a mess. I'm trying to figure out what's the right mix, what's the right combination. Um, I'm gonna have to be over there trying to figure this out, cleaning up, and baby's about to wake up for the next feed. And I'm like, why is this so hard? Why can't I just walk to a store, open the freezer door, and pick this up, the most pure, and best form of baby food and toddler food. Um, so I was like, well, by now, because I thought about this years ago with my first child, I was like, I'm sure somebody's already doing for a bigger market. And to my surprise, it wasn't. So I was like, I'm gonna do this. And I start calling everybody I knew in the food industry. I had a business before, but it was in the fashion industry. So this is a very different and new thing for me. So I start calling everybody I knew that knew about the food industry to kind of educate myself and figure out the best way to do it. And that's when, when somebody goes, hey, I, I want you to meet Agatha, who's been doing something similar than you want to do. And her and I sat across the table from each other, and right there we understood that we had the same goals and you know the same meaning of doing the right things for the right reasons. And it's been quite of a journey to be able to do that. And what I love about this, and I have a five-year-old, and we went through our share of pouch food when he was little, and most of it has so much sugar added to it. And you notice it after they eat a couple of the pouches, and suddenly they turn into, like, frenzied beasts yes. that you can't control. Yeah. And this has, like, one ingredient. Well, it's, you know, it was really important for us to do it just like parents do it at home, right? So you start from fresh ingredients, you chop them up, we cook it on small batches, then we flash freeze it, which is more of a fancy way than just freezing it at home, right? So we're locking in all the nutrients, the flavors, the textures of the ingredients they're in, and therefore, we don't need to add anything to the food. You know, it was very interesting when I got into this journey of making this. Remember the question I had, why can I not go to this? And as I did this, I understood why, because it's really, really hard. Like we had to go get equipment from the Netherlands and learn all about it and all those things because the way the food is done now, it's starting from parades, it's being over-processed. So yes, it is organic, but not organic, all organics are made equally, right? So the beauty of it is that what you see in the front, it's what is in the ingredient panel. As a mother, I know that I'm sick and tired of going to stores, and it takes me three times longer to go to stores because I don't believe what's in the front of the package anymore. I gotta read what's in the back. And my rule now is like, if I see an ingredient that I don't use at home, then I don't know the name of it, that I can't even read or pronounce it, I'm not buying it, you know? That is amazing. What has been the biggest learning curve for you in running this company? 
because I know you had a handbag line that did really, really well. And this is obviously a huge switch going from handbags yes. to baby food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a big switch. Um, look, we went through a lot of challenges. I mean, we can see here for hours talking about all the challenges we went to. Um, the biggest thing I learned is that when you have a product that it's for the greater good, and it's bigger than you, it's bigger than the company, um, you get really great people on board. And that was a big surprise for me of how much people will actually jump on board and want to help and want to make it work. Um, and you know, it was really important for me that, look, you know, we're in New York, right? We're in LA and you know, major markets. It's easier to find options that will deliver Absolutely. baby yep. food for you or you, know, you go to the store, it's easier to do that. But I travel all over the country and I go to, you know, Arkansas, population 205, you know, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, all over the place. And I know and I have experienced myself what families have access to. It's very limited. So for me, when we start, when Agatha and I started this journey, it was really important for me to say, I want this to be able to reach as many parents as possible. I want to make this accessible. We don't want this to be something just for the elites, right? And that's where we have the biggest blessing of being able to partner up with Target because being an amazing partner like they are, being able to really conceive the idea from the help us, you know, kind of bring this to life um, and make it accessible nationwide, pretty much, guys. And at a price point that I think anyone could swing, really. Yes. And, and let me just tell you something. Look, you know, we got to start. We're very compatible. And it is a big mission of our company that the more we get the brand grows and all of that to keep trying to bring the you know the price point down as much as we can. It's a big it's a big battle with the organic market for sure. Now, who is your test kitchen? Is it your three kids? My three kids, the neighbors' kids, the <laughs> the playground, <laughs> I get those kids. I mean, our friends. I mean, we uh, you know. It's funny because now that I'm sitting here, it's kind of little movies going through. I remember being, I've been in so many locations doing this and I had so many different people because it's been over two years that we've been working on. Um, but you know, I remember we were in uh, New Orleans and we had three days of cooking marathon with like four hours of sleep. You know, our breaks was laying on the floor, putting our legs up to get some rest. And uh, it was literally, I remember in New Orleans, the neighbors had a bunch of kids and they all came over and I had little bows and they all tried a little bit of each. We like this, we don't like that. Hmm, okay, let me put it up. So what is your rule? Like nine out of 10 have to like it or how, how do you know that it works? Yeah, the bigger, the bigger majority, you know, cause I have, you know, like everybody has different taste buds, right? So it's, it's hard to sit there and go, well, I don't like that, so let's not put that in there. You know, I mean, it's not about Camilla, it's about what everybody likes, you know? So it's some flavors in there that are my favorite, and others, they're like, this is good, but it's not my favorite, but somebody goes, you know, a big majority go, no, this is awesome. It's like, okay, great, we gotta have it in there. Now, you're a big foodie, obviously, because you're hosting the Kids Barbecue Championship, yes. too. Yes. So, yes. how did that happen for you? You know, how did it came about? Um, you know, I have, I've learned to, I started to learn how to cook when I first started dating Matthew, and I knew about two dishes. And he said, they're, they're okay, they were, Wait, they were which good, dishes? they were Brazilian dishes. Um, and as we moved in together and started, you know what I mean, to create a family, I was like, okay, I gotta step up because he's a really good cook. So I was like, I gotta step up my game here a little bit. And um, when I became a mom, it's really when I went, okay, wait a second. Now is this not about me anymore? I'm responsible for, you know, a little human being that's gonna follow my footsteps. So that's when it really became serious to me. And the whole lifestyle thing is just, it's what I do. Anybody that knows me personally know that I do that's what I do. I'm up at five in the morning every weekend to go to the flowers market to do the flower arrangements for the house and for my friends' baby showers and you know all the kids' activities in school and art projects. It's decorating. It's it's what I love. It's it's in me. So it's very a natural thing. No, I love your blog or your website. Sorry, not your blog because yeah. your Easter egg, the blue Easter bunnies. Yeah, me. 
Oh, yes. Women of today. You know, it's a neat thing. It's a, it's a, it's a site where we create a community. So a lot of the women share things they like. I make my own version, and we have a communication. So it's, it's a platform, again, I think that women should have a nice community and should learn from each other. So it's not about me. And should me. support each other. Exactly. So it's not about me saying, hey, look what I know. It's about me going, hey, look what I learned from this person and from that person, and then I tried this way and worked that way, or her version was awesome. I didn't need to do anything, you know? So um, just a community, and it's women of today, the site. So let's get back to food for a second, yes. right? Because look at this. I mean, come on now. It's beautiful, isn't it? I it want really to share is. a fun thing, too. You know, if you see, if you look at the packaging, it's got, we put a clear window. So right here on the spoon, right here, that you see, it's a clean window to the food, so you can actually see what's inside. I mean, how many cases we heard of all kinds of crazy things, right? So you can see what you're feeding. Yeah, because actually the other pouches you can't see inside. Yeah. And we also created, I'm very happy to say, that this was a, 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 you know, a very good work of labor of creating a first baby food pouch that can actually go in the microwave. So for the women on the go, you, you know, the parents on the go, I should say, um, you can put it in the microwave, and uh, it's on the go. But the surprising thing is exactly what you just did. You tried it, and you went, wow, this is uh, really good. Because in our home, we take it as snacks on the go. So any adult can have, any adult can try after workout and that kind of stuff. Now, if I was coming over for, to dinner at your house today, which, of course, I am. Absolutely. Absolutely. In my hotel room. <laughs> But if you were going to make dinner, what would be your signature dish? My signature dish? Um, <laughs> I have different ones. I cook a lot of fish. So I'd say that I do this fish that the whole family love. We call it the great bronzing, you know? It's what the kids like to say every time. But it's a whole fish and very simple um, salt, pepper, lemon, garlic, bake it. And um, I do sauteed vegetables. I get a big skillet and put all kinds of vegetables in it, sauteed with olive oil, garlic, and some seasonings, and put it around, and it's actually the meal's done. That's, uh, that sounds great. And you get your kids to eat it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> the trick is you got to keep putting stuff in front of them. You just do. You know, um, we were having that little conversation back there to where with my first one, I caught myself just giving my, my first child the, all the stuff that I liked. And then I went, wait a second, that's wrong. He's a different individual. He's not Camilla. Um, I got to feed him all the things that he may like that I don't. And turn out we do have different taste buds and he eats all kinds of vegetables that I'm not crazy about. Which we're not going to name because, no. because all vegetables are good. <laughs> True. <laughs> They're our friends. True. They're all good for you. How do you see this expanding? Um, well, we have three stages of now. We have stage one, which is four months plus, and it's single ingredients because that's the first introduction to a baby into solid food. So you need to see if they have any allergic reactions, if they're sensitive to anything. Then you jump into stage two, which is a mixed, com you know, mixed combination of fruits, mixed combination of vegetables, fruits and vegetables. And we have combinations in there. There are just vegetables, which is hard sometimes to find in the market as well. Um, that it still tastes amazing. Um, and then you go to stage three, which is very exciting because we are the only brand in the marketplace right now that has this product, which if a child is one year old, they shouldn't be just sucking out of the pouch anymore. It should be a combination. They should be doing the mouth to, uh, mouth to feeding table, to, however, how you say it? Yeah, the, the hand to mouth, right? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, I always say it wrong. Um, also, the textures to help them with speech. When they start, it's a whole, I mean, we can talk here for a very long time, but it's a whole studies and development on this. So we created, it comes in a tray. It comes in a beautiful little box, and it comes in a tray. And it's, kind, it's a frozen meal that looks like what you would cook for yourself at home, but it's made special for toddlers. That's incredible. How has no one thought of this? I don't know, because that's what Seriously, we do at incredible. home. Because that's what we do for home. at home. It's exactly what we do have at home. Have those kids' plates with the slots, and you put the food in the slots, and you give it to your kid. And you, you, know, and you want them. It gets messy, but that's part of the develop, development part that they need to have. And it tastes really good. The carrot lentil, every time we're in the office, 
that's my lunch. I put olive oil, salt, and pepper. That's my lunch. And by the way, I'm sitting here next to the applesauce. It actually smells like apples, which uh, I don't mean to like be ridiculous here, but do you know how few things actually smell like what they're supposed to be? It is true. You touched to a very good point. You know, we've been talking to a lot of, you know, doing a lot of studies and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of the moms always talk about, well, you know, I feed my kid like pitchy my nose. Yeah. Now, if you're going to pinch your nose to try to feed something to your child that you would never try or eat it, why would you do that? You know, um, so I believe that this is the first brand that you can actually parents can actually enjoy it with their kids. And, um, yeah, and then the other thing is this, guys, you know, for babies, for kids, you got to think just like us, okay? If you go to a restaurant and they gave you really bad food, would you ever come back to it? Right? I don't think so. So if kids are associating meal time with not a happy time, this is not fun, the flavor is not good. I don't like the smell of this. I mean, they taste it and they smell it just like we do. Um, I don't want to go back there. I don't, every time I'm going to sit in, I'm going to be unhappy. So it's already hard enough trying to get your kid to eat new things and try, right? So if we can make that adventure positive and fun and be more of a family situation with things that taste good and they will enjoy it, then it's, it's a good thing. Who's the most daring eater in your house? My, with the kids, my seven-year-old. My seven-year-old would try pretty much anything. Doesn't mean he likes all of it. I remember we went to, a, we were in, um, where were we? We're in Asia. And we went to this, it's a new concept, you know, deconstructing food and all of it. And it was an Indian to put on top of that. Uh, with the deconstruction, everything, and, and he, he really wanted to come, and we're like, Levi, like, this is very different food, they're not gonna have, you know, any, it's adult, very adult. He wanted to come, I'm like, okay, but you have to try everything if you're coming. That was the deal. So he came in, and I remember one of the dishes came in, and it looked like a raw egg with something in the ball, and it was, it was hard for us to swallow, and I just remember he pointed him out, and he was about to, yeah, get out, but he's, he stuck to it, he swallowed, and it was like, oh, Levi. But, you know, he's, he's, he gets adventures. I mean, my son tells me if I give him $20, he'll eat something. <laughs> That's a good deal. For him? <laughs> Maybe bring it down to a dollar. 50 cents? <laughs> yeah, that would be better. He'd be broke by a couple years from now. <laughs> Do you have any flavors that you really, 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 really want to include that you haven't done yet? We have we have a few different flavors, yes, you know, that we have in our, that they're ready, they're done. I mean, we came up with 52, Agatha and I cooked for three days, and we came up with 52 different flavors between the selections that she already had from when, you know, when she was doing um, the Southeast region, and then new flavors that we came up together. The idea that, you know, it's a lot of studies out there that show that kids need to be, um, how you say, um, you know, you need to show them different flavors early on. So, of course, we have our basics, which is the apple and Strawberry. the applesauce. Yeah. We have the, you know, sweet potato, the carrots, the squash, just the good, the peas. If you look at our peas, do you remember how the peas used to look for your baby from the jar? Do you remember? Brown. They're okay. brown. This is our peas. That's the color of peas. You know, that's the whole go. So we have those. And then, you know, Agatha is from Africa. So she was born and raised in Africa in a family of farmers. I'm from Brazil, born and raised in Brazil from a family of farmers as well. So we brought in a little bit of our flavors. So she brought in, you know, azuki beans. Like, that tastes amazing. And I'm like, well, I'm Latin. And we grow up eating rice and beans every day. So let's do a brown rice, pinto beans, and turkey. So we have different flavors that really represents different cultures in there. That's awesome. And I think we're just in time for our audience Q&A. But you guys don't get to try it. That's only me. Oh, why not? <laughs> because I want it for myself. What did you do? <laughs> good, good, good. Does anybody have any questions? 
Right here, Camilla. Yes. Good morning. Hi. Um, so I most likely have the skill, uh, the um, not great skills at cooking, more associated with a toddler. So my question to you, I'm very interested in the organic lifestyle. What simple dish would you recommend that I could make to possibly impress somebody? To possibly impress somebody? A lady? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I can share with you that the, the fish that I just told you is the most simple. It's so simple, and the presentation, it's amazing. Now, if you're going to impress somebody that loves salmon, you go to the store, you buy a big piece of salmon, lemon on top, soy sauce, okay? Then you sprinkle it with salt, and you then slice the lemon, really thin slices, and you cover the salmon with it, and you bake it. Simple as that. Again, beautiful presentation. This is just not fair to do this like right at lunchtime. It's just no, not right. right. I am getting hungry. <laughs> Hi, I want Hi, to. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. I wanted to know what is the most unusual combination that you found that was really tasty. The unusual, the most unusual combination that we found. I'm gonna say this because this one I'm not sure we can take because it's not out yet, but. Something that it's not really in the market that we brought in was mango avocado. You know, that's something that it's like, it's not really out there. We all eat mango and avocado sauce and this and that, you know, the Mexican style. And so it's, it's a flavor that we brought up that it's... I would also say you're probably the only one that has avocado because it turns brown so quickly that most people won't do yes, it. Yes, most, most people won't do it. Most people won't do it. But... um. It's good, and our mango is really good too, really good. Hi, um, yeah, mangoes. It's mango season, so I'm so excited right now. For yes, that to come. that's yes. when like the smoothies and everything are the best. But you can pick up one of the pouch and put <laughs> in your smoothies. I would like to try. Congratulations! I'm the oldest of five, so I think this product is amazing because I've seen my mom grow up with the the packing and having to prepare it before, and then I think this is. I'm happy it's finally coming. So congratulations! Oh, thank on you. That. Thank I wanted you so to much. know what's one of the hardest dishes you've had to cook before, and what's next that on your list of ideas and accumulate. This. What's the hardest dish I had to cook before? Personally? Oh, personally. Hmm. Trying to think here. I... We decided to do a birthday party for Matthew, and I pulled up last minute, and it was just the guys. And I was like, well, I'll cook. I'll just cook. We're just going to do it at home, and it's going to be simple, which we usually do. But it the number is starting to grow and to grow and to grow. And by then, I had already committed that I was, I was cooking. Um, so we ended up, me, by myself, with tons of men in the house, nobody else, decorating that, the, you know, setting up the table, cooking, serving, cleaning, doing the whole thing. But the timing of the dishes that I had it was a very not smart setup if I knew that many would show up. So that was the challenge of just not as much of what I was cooking, but it was more that I was trying to time everything right. Um, but again, at the end, it was all men. They were drunk by the time they ate it. So everything tastes great. Everything came out awesome. <laughs> That's your story, and we're sticking to it. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, um, the excitement about this is that, you know, this is, we, we are at Target um, pretty much nationwide. We have 31 different uh, products. We, we have, when you walk in, in the store, guys, it's in the freezer section, and you cannot miss it. It's a whole door. Um, so we created so many flavors for this, and we have a whole line of expansion that it's going to come slowly, slowly, little surprises is going to come for you guys. So I'm excited to be able to share that soon. Well, thank you thank so much you. for being here, and Yummy Spoonfuls thank is at Target. Yes. Thank you, guys.